Hello, and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at the very, we're going to start looking at the very weird uh, set called Cold Snap. Um, so the first deck we're going to look from that is Aurochs Stampede. Um, so I think a quick explanation about Cold Snap, because it is quite obscure. So uh, between the end of Ravnica and Time Spiral, this, this was kind of like that summer's um that year's like summer product this cold snap thing and what cold snap was it was really weirdly marketed um because like wizards were like oh we found like a secret design document that was really for the third set of ice age block and everyone was like that's obviously not true because these cards have you know <laughs> they've been designed they're obviously there's modern design uh, mechanics behind them and then i guess wizards were then just like oh oh yeah we just wanted to do some extra stuff like so we wanted to make like a homage to ice age weirdly which is like one of the like oldest uh sets there is um and which introduced like kind of a lot of uh, uh kind of uh weird cool mechanics i suppose uh but yeah so cold snap was i say like the sort of like the summer release and it was just like a small set i think it was about maybe 150 new cards and all these pre-cons are mixed in with reprints from ice uh from ice age and alliances which was you know one of the sets in like the ice age block so um yeah it's very weird like a lot of those old cards were you know they were reprinted with new frames which is i think maybe the first time that's happened like that kind of like old old cards being reprinted keeping their original artwork but like in new frames um and you obviously you know these days we have new cards being reprinted into retro frames like the classic card frame uh which people really like so that was it was interesting for that regard that these old cards were getting uh updated card faces um so yeah very very weird set cold snap um and, uh, you know, it did, I think it did a few things right. It did a few things, you know, that could have done better. Anyway, if you want to look into Cold Snap, it's really interesting actually reading about, like, the history and, like, how it's, I say, marketed and announced and developed. Very, very weird little set. Anyway, let's talk about Auroch Stampede, uh, which is a red-green deck. So we have um, the deck list here. So 27 creatures, 6 instants, 2 enchantments, 1 artifact, and 24 land, and mana curb off to the side there. Uh, so let's start looking. So the theme of the deck is Aurochs, uh, which are such a, a weird, such a weird uh, specific little tribe. So uh, this first card here, just Aurochs. Uh, so this is one of the Ice Age cards that got reprinted into a new card frame and uh, i'll just say now you may notice this uh the image for that is like um much higher quality than the other three uh the reason for that the the other three um aurox herd bull aurox and rhymehorn aurox they've all come off gatherer which is wizards you know like official card database uh where this one for uh for aurox came off scryfall and the reason for that is because uh, on gatherer they don't have like this version of aurox um displayed like this uh the ice age reprint in the new frame so i had to go because like you know when i like uh you know displaying these cards i like to show them as like accurate as how they would look as when you opened the pack essentially um but yeah that wasn't that wasn't an option so i had to go looking for another source so there'll be all these kind of old reprinted cards throughout these cold snap videos will be much higher quality and i think going forward i will use uh the scryfall images just because they are much they're much uh sharper clearer images anyway talking about images we should be talking about cards so aurochs uh, four mana for a two through trample, and when it attacks, it gets plus one plus naught to the turn for every other attacking Aurochs. So, like back in the day, this was the only Aurochs <laughs> you could have. So you'd have like your play set of four Aurochs, and that would be it. You know, uh, you know, they could all attack together, and they'd all get plus three plus naught. You know, I guess. Um, so a weird little thing that Cold Snap focused on was like, let's expand the Aurochs tribe, uh, which was, I was like, okay, fine. Um, so Aurochs and Zone, it's really hard to judge Aurochs because like this is a card that's it's one of the oldest cards we've I've looked at this channel because you know we looked at Tempest. Um, you know, Aurochs is is like two years older than Tempest. You know, it's it's like two whole blocks before Tempest. Um so it doesn't feel fair to kind of like judge it um too harshly, you know. 
Um, so Aurochs heard three of these. Uh, so six mana for a 4-4 four, four Trample. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you can search your library for an Aurochs card, reveal it, and then put it into hand, then shuffle. And then when it attacks, it has the Aurochs ability, gets plus one, plus one, plus one for every other attacking Aurochs. Um, so this is like your Aurochs tutor, I suppose, um, which is, you know, fine. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's it's obviously a little expensive at a 4-4 four, four Trample, but I think the fact it gets to tutor up something is is okay. Uh, four bull aurochs. So this is, this is the cheap aurochs. Um, so two mana for a two one with trample is actually you know that's okay costed I think actually. Um, and when it attacks, it's plus one plus one until for every other attacking aurochs. Um, so yeah, again I think that's actually perfectly costed like a two one uh, trample for two. Yeah, you know, at this time of the game. And then rhyme horn aurochs. So we get to talk about the other uh thing that I that cold snap did. So it's five mana for a three three. It is a snow creature. So this is where, um, because we've seen snow come back in Cal time in a few like modern sets, uh, like modern masters or modern horizons, one of those. But this is uh, Cold Snap is the first set where snow became a proper um, uh, super type, like you know, like artifact or enchantment or whatever. Um, so now you can have snow creatures. And, you know, that just means, you know, there's some effects that care about permanence being snow and, yeah, and then interact with them in different ways. Uh, so Rhymehorn Aurox is pretty much the same as all the other Aurox. It's a 3-3 trample, and when it attacks, it gets the Aurox ability. But it has this ability that requires uh, two uh, two colours and one snow mana, which is the other thing that Cold Snap introduced. So snow mana can, um, is uh, mana that can be paid with one mana from any snow permanent. So, uh, you know, like you could use a snow covered mountain, which normally produces red mana, but you can use that red mana to pay for snow mana costs. And I'm going to say snow so much, it's going to like completely lose all meaning. Um, but yeah, so this, uh, so Rhymehorn has like this lure ability. It's kind of like a limited expensive lure ability. Um, but you know, this is, this is the, the kind of things I think Cold Snap did that were really interesting was snow creatures and snow mana. And that's the basis of, um, one of my favorite decks in this uh in this set of four but we'll look at that we'll get to that one so anyway we've talked a lot about these aurochs so this is meant to be like um sort of like the theme of the deck yeah you play a bunch of aurochs and attack with them they all become really big tramplers i think i i owned this deck and i played it out of the box and i remember it doing sort of okay uh with all the aurochs but then we move on uh, so we have two Boreal Druids, uh, so one green mana for a 1-1, one, one. it is a snow creature, and it taps to give you one colours, but of course that one colours counts as snow mana, which you can use to pay for snow abilities, or, you know, uh, you know that requires snow mana. Um, yeah, he's fine, it's just a little mana dork, fine. Uh, two Frostweb Spiders, uh, so two colours and a green for a 1-3 with reach. Uh, it's a snow creature, and whenever it blocks a creature with flying, gets a plus one, plus one counter at the end of combat. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. <laughs> you know, I think that's perfectly okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> just not much to say. Um, so two Woolly Mammoths. This is one of the Ice Age reprints. One colours and two green for a 3-2. Um, has Trample as long as you control a snow land. Um, I'm pretty sure all the land in this deck is snow land. Yeah, snow covered forest, snow covered mountains, and highland wields. Anyway, so yeah, that's basically always going to have trample. So three mana for a three two trample is is okay. Uh, a single stalking yeti. Uh, so two colors and two red uh, for a three three snow creature. Um, basically, when it comes into play, it fights another creature. This is like before fight gets keyworded. So it, you know, it's, you've got a very dense text box here. Um, but it's basically the fight effect comes in and it does its damage to um, one creature, and that creature does its damage back to stalking yeti as well. And you can pay uh, two colors and one snow to bounce it back to hand um, as a sorcery. So you can sort of it's a repeatable um, kind of burn spell essentially. Uh, we have two earthen goo so two colors one red for a two two with trample and it has cumulative upkeep so this is i think something that cold snap did wrong so cumulative upkeep is well they sort of changed the wording of it to basically to make it easier to understand so and i think they formalized this kind of age counter thing anyway so cumulative up upkeep is, so at the beginning of your upkeep, you have to put an age counter on this permanent, and then you sacrifice it unless you pay the cumulative upkeep cost for each of those age counters. Um, so, you know, first turn it only has one counter, so you only pay the upkeep once, and then next turn it has two age counters, and so on and so on. So they tried to do this thing, I think, where um, they were trying to stick true to um, Ice Age design, which had cumulative upkeep as well. And um, I think they tried to make it a bit more tolerable, 
that uh, yeah, like Earth and Goo here. So it gets plus one, plus one for every age counter on it. So it gets it gets bigger the longer you keep it out. But it it's it's just there's no denying that cumulus of upkeep is kind of like not fun because it basically means you're just sinking all your mana into like keeping sort of like one thing going like the earth and goo it's not worth keeping this thing going i think really um maybe like one or two turns um just so it keeps growing but you know that's that's then pretty much then all you're putting your mana into and uh yeah i just i don't know i, d I don't know if bringing cumulus of upkeep back in this way was um was so good there are a few cards in cold snap that use cumulus of upkeep in um in like really uh, good, interesting ways. Um, I think there's a one of the rares in this deck will will see that. But for the most part, this was you know not. I think this was a bit of a. It was a brave attempt, but I think it ultimately ended up being a bit of a miss. Uh, so Gorilla Shaman is one of the uh, reprints. Uh, so one red for a one one ape shaman, and you can pay X X one uh, to destroy a non creature artifact with converted mana cost X. Um, so this is the infamous Mox Monkey, uh, so called because it would just destroy uh, you know like uh, those really ex you know those valuable like Mox uh, artifacts like Mox Sapphire or Mox Pearl or whatever just for very cheap because they only cost their mana value is only zero. Uh, so he would just like machine gun his way through like all the all, all your opponents like moxes and stuff. So I think for that reason, um, it's like a popular card in vintage. I think. I mean, I'm just guessing there. I don't really have any idea about vintage. I would imagine it would be okay in vintage, just because it is this um, repeatable um, artifact destruction. Even not targeting like moxes or or mana rocks or something. I think this is an okay ability to have on a um on a one drop. You know. Uh, and then we have an Orcish Lumberjack, one of those. Uh, one red mana for a 1-1. One, one. Uh, tap, Sacrifice Forest, add three mana of any combination of red or green to your mana pool. So this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, you chop down a forest to get this uh, kind of three mana boost. Uh, so you're essentially coming out two mana ahead instead of tapping the forest normally. Um, but of course you can Sacrifice Forest to get red mana instead, which I think is quite interesting. Um, so yeah, I think Orcish Lumberjack is, is, I think that's an all right card as well. Again, like for a one drop, pretty good. Uh, then we have a Deadly Insect, uh, five mana for six one with Shroud. Uh, yeah, I never really liked Deadly Insect. Um, just I think it's uh, firstly that art is so weird, it's so weird the art in like the Ice Age era art. Um, but yeah, like having Shroud is is fine, but it's just that you know only having one toughness obviously makes it incredibly fragile. Um, and obviously having Shroud means you've got no way of kind of like buffing it up yourself. Um, so yeah, kind of it feels very fragile. Uh, two Tinder Wolves, uh, so one green mana for a Nort 3 Defender. Um, you can sacrifice it to give yourself double red, um, or you can pay one red and sacrifice it to deal two damage to a creature it, it's blocking. Um, so this is good. I think this is like a pretty, um, uh, you know, pretty useful, uh, two useful abilities to have. It either, you know, gives you a, a small, like, mana boost, or, you know, you can uh, kill a small creature it blocks. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a perfectly good card. Uh, and then we have a giant trapdoor spider, uh, one red, one green, um, or one colour, so one red, one green, I should say, for two, three. Uh, it's a spider without reach, which feels weird, but it does make sense because it's a trapdoor spider, which they don't spin webs, so it makes sense, but it does feel weird. Uh, one red, one, uh, one colour, one red, one green, tap, um, exile, uh, giant trapdoor spider, and a target creature that's attacking you and that doesn't have flying. Um, so it just you know grabs a creature and drags it into its lair, um, but then it exiles itself. Um, so kind of like a useful deterrent to have out like if your opponent sees that and just like oh god I'm not gonna swing with my big creature because the trapdoor spider will eat it. So yeah, I think quite a fun card. Um, and then a single bounty of the hunt. Uh, so three colors and two green. Uh, you can remove a green card in your hand from the game rather than pay bounty of the hunt's mana cost. And until end of turn, it's basically uh, what's the one from. Ravnica, Seeds of Strength, like target creature gets plus one, plus one, target creature gets plus one, plus one, target creature gets plus one, plus one. So it's just a way of distributing plus three, plus three amongst up to three creatures, basically. Um, interestingly, this is part of a cycle uh, of spells from Alliance where you could where you could remove a card that shared a colour with it to pay it for free. Um, so green got this, <laughs> Bounty of the Hunt. Blue got Force of Will, <laughs> which is like generally regarded as one of the best cards in the game. So pretty pretty uneven cycle there. Um, before you ask, no, none of, the, uh, none of the decks have Force of Will as a reprint. That would be insane. 
Um, so now we go back to the cold snap cast. This is the thing with these cold snap decks is like very few, only about half the deck is actually cold snap cards. The other half of these weird old reprints, which is fine. Like the reprints in this actually, I think are pretty good in retrospect, but, um, yeah, it just feels like you weren't really getting a lot of cards. Anyway. Um, so a single hibernation's end, one of the rares in the deck. So five mana enchantment has cumulative upkeep. Uh, for one, uh, whenever you pay Hibernations and Cumulative Upkeep, search your library for a creature with mana value equal to the number of age counters and put it straight into play. And if you do shuffle. So this is, a, I think, a pretty OK way of using Cumulative Upkeep. Um, the fact that it's like a pretty strong tutor effect. Um, I would prefer if it was the... Um, the creature you get was uh, mana uh, mana value equal to or less than the number of age counters. Like having to be exact is makes it a little. It's kind of tricky to work with, but um, I think all the aurochs are on a curve. Bull aurochs is what two. Normal aurochs is four. Ryan Mormon's five. So this could kind of like ramp up into the aurochs, I suppose. Um, I think you've got creatures all across the mana curve that you could you could hit anything with this. Um, yeah, I think it's okay. I think it's like an okay, I think it's an okay way to try and use cumulative upkeep. I think this works better than the um the other one, the earth and goo. Uh, and then the other rare is uh, shape of the Witigo, which is three colors and three green for a aura. Goes on a creature. Uh, when it comes into play, put six plus one plus one counters on the enchanted creature, which is you know obviously really big boost. Um, but you are paying six for it though. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one plus one counter on the enchanted creature if it attacked. Uh, attacked or blocked since your last upkeep otherwise you remove a plus one plus one counter from it uh, so this is a reference to a card from ice age which was uh, which was just called Witigo, and i think it had almost this exact same ability like it came in with counters and you had to basically keep using it in combat otherwise it would lose its counters which is you know it's a fun fun design i suppose um this feels weird as a rare i think I mean, uh, six plus one plus one counters is obviously pretty big. You've got, you know, all the Aurochs in here, which all have tramples. So that could potentially just be game there. Um, I think it's OK. It's like, it feels a little underwhelming as a rare, honestly, but I think it's OK. Um, and then a single resize, uh, one cards, one green. Uh, Tart creature gets plus three, plus three, ten to ten. And recover. So recover is another thing that uh, Cold Snap introduced. Uh, so recover is this ability if uh, if the, if say like resizes in your graveyard, um, if a creature you control dies, you can pay the card's recover cost and then you get it back from your graveyard back into your hand. Otherwise, it gets exiled. Like you get that one chance to try and get it back. Um, but this is like I think a pretty fun um, ability, and I think it's only on like you know maybe five cards, like one in each color, um, which is a shame because I think it's it's. Uh, you know, it's got potential. It's like it's a nice, I think, kind of alternative to um like flashback. Um, in the fact that like um yeah, you you could potentially get more uses out of it, but you have to get your timing right. Like if you miss your chance, then you've lost it. So I think it's a bit of a fun skill test there. But yeah, I think it's just a shame it's not used more. Uh, and then we have two Balduvian Rage, so X and one red. Uh, target attacking creature gets plus X plus naught to end turn. Uh, draw a card at the be at the beginning of next turn's upkeep. So this is another kind of nod towards um, Ice Age. So it's a cold snap card, but they did this thing where like there's a lot of Ice Age cards which are called uh, what are they nicknamed slow trips. So instead of just like draw a card, which we normally refer to as cantrips, like you have a small effect and you draw a card. Um, so this is like you you draw a card, but Usually, it, but then you know your opponent's next turn or something, or you know if you do it on your opponent's turn, you're drawing your next turn. Rather, you're not basically you're not drawing the card straight away, which you know is is at least you're drawing a card, I suppose. But like, I feel why add this extra, <laughs> this extra kind of like memory issue of like, all right, I have to, I'm not drawing the card right now. I have to wait until a certain phase to draw it. It just feels a bit awkward. Um, this, I mean, it's fine. It's in rage. Yeah, you know, it's technically better than Enrage because it, you know, it gives you the card draw. So this is this is fine. Uh, two incinerates, one cast, one red, uh, three damage to any target, and a creature dealt damage can't be regenerated. This turn, yep, perfectly fine. Classic incinerate. We like incinerate. Uh, yep, <laughs> not much to say. Just a good burn spell, and then a single whalebone glider. Um, two mana artifact, two and tap target creature with power three or less gains flying until end of turn. So this is a good thing to put on your aurochs. Um, before they attack and then they attack obviously and then they get their power boost um for attacking with all the other with all the other aurochs. So um yeah, it's fine. 
And then two Highland Wields. Um, so these were okay. So snow lands, so they give you snow mana. Uh, it comes to play tapped, and it gives you red or green. Um, so yeah, fine, fine, perfectly fine card. Uh, so what could have been? So overall, I do think the deck is doing the best it can with kind of like the limited cardboard. As I said, like Cold Snap is a small set. It hasn't got a lot of its own things to draw from, but it does end up making it feel like these these decks didn't really feel like Cold Snap. They just felt like this weird kind of retro experiment of using um, old uh, Ice Age and Alliances cards. But there's a few cards, I think, that could have fit in here. Uh, Boreal Centaur is just a 2-2 two, two for 2. Um, you, you can, spe you can uh, spend Snow Mana to give it plus 1, plus 1 to the end of turn, which is fine. Uh, Carplusen? 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 Whatever. The Strider. Uh, 4 mana for 3-4. It can't be the target of blue or black spells, which is fine, I suppose. Again, 4 mana for a 3-4 with that ability is okay. Uh, Into the North. Really surprised this isn't in here, actually. Uh, one cards and one green. You search your library for a snow land and put it into play tapped. Um, so this can get non-basic snow lands, which is pretty interesting. It means you can get the Highland Wields. And, you know, it's a red-green deck, and, like, it's a fairly high mana curve, so I would have expected, like, a, you know, just a bit of ramp, I suppose. Like, you could have had this instead of, like, I don't know, like, the giant insect or something. Like, that's not doing anything in here. This, a couple of copies of Into the North would have been good. And uh, along the same lines, Scred. Um, so I think this is the only uh, Cold Snap red deck that really cares about snow. Like, you have all, you have all your snow lands, you have quite a few, like, snow creatures. Uh, so Scred deals damage to a creature equal to the number of snow permits you control. So when all your lands are snow, this is this just keeps ramping up. This is a really high ceiling. Um, it's a really good red burn spell. Yeah, it can only hit creatures, but it can usually hit them for about you know five six damage easy just by just because you're playing lands which are snow permanents. So yeah, it definitely could have had a couple of these. So in summary, yeah, like um, I think it's a I think it's a good showing for Cold Snap. I think it's I think it's really fun. They decided to focus on Aurochs of all things, um, but yeah, just I just wish it had more Cold Snap cards. This is going to be a thing I think I'm going to be saying for a lot of these Cold Snap decks. I just wish Cold Snap had been a bigger set, so like these decks would have had more Cold Snap cards. As it is, this feels about sort of like fifty fifty between Cold Snap cards and then like the Alliance and Ice Age reprints. And I just would have liked it more if it was more like two-thirds to one-third, that kind of ratio. But, you know, as it is, I think it's fine. I think the reprints in here are actually okay. Like, um, the um, the Gorilla Shaman and, like, the Orcish Lumberjack are, like, both really good reprints, actually. They're both really good creatures. Um, so, yeah, overall, I think this one is actually... I think it's pretty solid. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's good. But what are your thoughts after seeing Auroch Stampede? Um, what are your thoughts on Cold Snap in general? Please put a comment below. I'd love to hear people's thoughts and opinions and, and stories about this deck or the setting in general. Um, but I'll be back next time, and I'm going to look at another Cold Snap pre-constructed deck. But until then, thank you for watching and listening, and have a great day.